friends, this is the first in Reaper Don't Gotta Be Hard for audiobook <laughs> recording. That's a work in progress on the title. There are a lot of great videos already out on how to set up Reaper, so I'm going to breeze through quite a bit of this to kind of just give you the nuts and bolts. Um, so I won't show you it fail, I'll just show you what you want to change. This should be similar to what it would look like if you would open it after a fresh install. First things first, you don't want these grid lines on there because they mean you can only click on the grid lines. So let's get rid of those in the options. You'll go to Snap Grid, enable snapping because you don't want that. You want the more granular approach where you can click anywhere within the waveform. And then also just turn off Show Grid so you don't have to look at those lines if you don't want to. You can keep it on if you'd like. That's optional. Uh, next, you want to go ahead and always insert a new track. You can later on save this so um, when you open up a new file it'll just have a blank track there, but for now, get used to inserting a new track. This is how you'll visually see it on the left right here. That allows you to see, okay, I have a track, it's ready to go. Um, when you're recording, always make sure FX is off by clicking to the right of the FX. And then when it says you need to arm a recording, so if you try to hit record right now, hey, you don't have anything armed or record warning, no tracks are armed for recording. The way to fix that is to click this little icon here. That red circle, when it's lit up, means that your um, microphone is armed and ready to go. I just rewound to the beginning of the track here. You can go to the end of the track there, but um, I'm assuming you know some of this, so I'm not going into everything in uh, minute detail. All right, so now if I hit record, and there's a hotkey for that, uh, Command R, you can also always go to um, your actions and show action list and look for what you wanted to do. For example, record, and it'll tell you the hotkeys um, as you see them. There's a big long list of these, so don't get overwhelmed, but this gives you a preview of how much power there is in Reaper. So usually Command R is how to record in Mac. Um, so I'll hit that. Hi, I'm recording in Reaper. This is a fun time. Okay, um, at first it will always show this, select files to save or delete. You can hit save all, you can uncheck the on stop. Make sure you have autosave turned on if you do that, which you can do in Reaper preferences. And then in project, I believe. Yeah. So project, you can change this setting here to um, save every five minutes when not recording, project saving, and then hit apply. And then the next time you can just say, don't remind me. So um, I'm using the hotkey to record, or you can just click down here, but if I wanted to punch in, now I would simply just hit that and say, I'm still recording. But you notice, I'll turn that off for now, save all. You notice a couple of things. Every time I do a new recording, it shows up like this because I haven't changed that. So there's an option. Um, so these are both of my takes. So if I click in here and I press This play, is a fun time. That's a fun time. This is a fun time. Hit that and say, I'm still recording. So I can click into the different things and listen to it. And sorry, I just got a notification on my phone. I turned that down. Great, so what you might wanna do is in options under uh, new recording that overlaps existing media, go ahead and select trims existing items to new recording, tape mode, behind new recording, sorry. And then you can right click on any of the items and go to take and go to crop to active take and command Z because I didn't actually click into it when I did that. <laughs> crop to active take and then I'll just go back to the original and then just take. Once again, I'm just right clicking on it to get this menu and then crop to active take. And then I don't need um, this one. So I'll just delete that. Great, so that's how you punch in. But you might realize that you're not actually hearing the pre-roll which for punching in is really important. So the way to fix that is to go to options and then to go to uh, metronome pre-roll settings. And that opened on a different window, popping over. 
go ahead and um, on this window select pre-roll before recording. You can leave everything else the way it is. And usually two measures is good. Remember these are measures not seconds. So try that out and you can edit it accordingly. All right, that's all we need to do there. So I'll close out of that. Hi, I'm recording. So great, now I'm gonna punch in. Hi, I'm recording in Reaper. And now I'm continuing that sentence. Hi, I'm recording in Reaper, and now I'm continuing that sentence. So Hi, I I'm just popped in there. So that'll be perfect. If you need to get the timing, a cool thing to learn right away is to hold down Alt or Option, and then your mouse will change um, with these little two arrows, and you can drag over, and your timing will now be better. Reaper, and now I'm continuing that sentence. Great. The other thing you can do is you'll see these little notches here. That just means that that is where your item ended. So you can drag the end over and not have that overlap there at the end because it'll just start repeating the whole item over and over. Um, ignore it for now. Um, you can also just, if that's not the end of your actual file, you can just click wherever you want to start recording again and keep going. Perfect. So a couple of other things down here, um, you might want to right click on the time and you can select that you want to, you can do a few things down here, select which one works best for you. If you don't like the use ruler time unit, which is more of a music thing, you can go to minutes and seconds. That way it's a little bit more clean and you can hide things that you don't want to see down here. It's not the most important thing, so I won't you know, bore you with those details. Great. So now we know how to record. We know um, how to get the pre-roll turned on. We know how to get the snapping turned off. Um, you can also up here, if you wanted to right click on this bar up top and also change that to minutes, seconds, instead of also having the measures and beats just to clean it up a little bit. Cool. So that's how to do that. Um, you might have seen people go in and correct it. So if they, for example, only want to replace this word, which is in recording in recording, um, they might change their options here to time selection auto punch, which is nice because then it'll only record during this time selection that you have. So if I go into uh, click anywhere back here and then just hit the regular record, you'll see that the icon changed into like a circular pattern. So hit record. Hi, I'm recording in Reaper. So, and then you can use that option and kind of get it um, where you need it to go, holding down option and the mouse key. Hi, I'm recording in Reaper. So, <laughs> not the best take of recording, but it's fine, it'll work. It shows you what I wanted to show you. Great, so that's how to record. Um, and now, and how to do the auto punch to fix things, which is also important. Now, the editing part, which confuses a lot of people. The effects are where you can add your chain. So um, just like you would in Audacity or in you know Studio One, all of those, you can have a chain on your um, on your track, but it won't actually burn into the track. It's non-destructive. So when you render it, it'll just use whatever those tools are on the fly or when you're rendering it, it might take a little while longer to render with those tools on there. So what you can do is these are just basic ones that I have. Um, you, and I'm not going to help you <laughs> make a stack because this is very unique to you, but you can use the ones that are built in or additional plugins that you might have access to from outside sources. Um, or, you know, free other, other sources, but you would just basically say, Hey, I want to add something. So I'll remove all the effects by right clicking in there. You can remove all effects. I think in the latest version, you can also just hit delete, but for now I'll do it this way. Um, and then you can add the effect and it'll bring up this box. So if you usually use an EQ, you could search for Rhea EQ if you knew what that was or you could type in EQ and see all the different versions you might have access to. But we'll just use the built-in one for now. And you just drag and drop it over there, or you can hit okay, but since I'm adding multiple, I'll just drag and drop it over. Um, and you can set this up however you like. I happen to have some presets 
This is kind of a low pass and high pass filter. That'll work fine for our purposes. And you would just continue through. Um, so if you usually also added a, a noise reduction, uh, there's reaffer, which you can use, which may or may not be useful for you. Um, basically, um, you would just you would just add effects. So that's how you would add that. And it's, um, I'll leave that as it is now. I'll go ahead and load my default back up. So whatever you find out to be your chain, you would put that here is basically end of the day how you do it and dragging and dropping from this view is how you would do that. When you when this button is green, it's going to try and play those effects when you're playing back. I usually turn off my record armed when I'm doing it, uh, especially with some of my RX plugins. It can cause like a weird glitch in the playback because it's trying to do what it's monitoring. So my voice in real time, as well as the um, actual file. Hi, I'm recording in Reaper, and now I'm continuing that sentence. Hi, I'm cool. So that's um, how that works. And when you're recording, like I said, you want to make sure this is off so that it's not trying to add the effects while you're recording, which can cause it to also cause a little glitch in the background. Great. So that is how effects work in a nutshell. Next thing, um, I already showed you how to use the Alt key and move something back and forth to get your timing right when you're editing. You can also hover over these lines that separate the different items or the different takes, and you can drag them over depending on, see that icon, how it changes. If you're a little bit to the left of it, it'll move this item. If you're a little to the right of it, it'll move that item. So that is something to be aware of. These little red um, lines are a crossfade. So if you uh, drag it, drag this one to kind of go over the one here, it'll crossfade those two together. Um, so it might sound a little cleaner. Um, and it also usually adds a small crossfade automatically, or you can turn that on in the settings if not. Okay, so that's that. And what else? What else? You can set up an external editor, which is nice um, in your preferences. I believe, you know, you set these things up once and you always forget. Okay, yeah. So down here, external editors, you can add. And then you can go to browse and then find in applications, uh, whichever one you wanted to use. So say I wanted to use, um, no, it's not by <laughs> thing. I'm like, hmm. but let's say I want to use Isotope as my external editor or eh, something that's free. How about Audacity? So that'll be my primary one. So great, I've added that. So all it is is finding external editors and preferences and hitting add and going to your applications folder or program um, folder and finding it. Hit OK. So now if I hear a noise that I can't get with the internal tools, you can always click on the item that it belongs to and hit open items and editor. And Audacity will pop up. It's on a different screen, so let me pull it over. So this is the file now. Hi, I'm recording in Reaper. This Great. So what I would do in Audacity is a little different. I would have to go to File, um, Export, Export Audio, find where it's saved, um, which I believe is temporary work, so that's good, and then just hit Save. I didn't make any changes, so it's like, okay, I saved it. But <laughs> if, for example, I deleted this and hit File, Export, this will override everything, so because this is a dummy file, that's okay. But you would hit export audio, you'd hit save, and then it already exists. Are you sure you want to replace it? And you can say yes, if you're sure that what you edited was what you want to keep, because that will be destructive. Close out of that. No, I, you don't need to save the project. Just the exporting of the audio is all you have to do here. So hit no. And then if I go back to this view, You'll, you would see that it has changed slightly, but in Reaper, and now I'm continuing that sentence. Yeah. In Reaper, I think if you pull it here, fun time. It, because it pulls in the whole, um, 
the whole item. Sometimes you'll have something that's hidden anyway behind, so in this case it didn't actually impact it. But that's kind of how to do the export um, import um, as far as the external editor. Great. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, so here's the last thing I want to kind of talk about in this video. Actions. Um, if you've used other devices, you might see them listed as macros. You might see them listed as, um, you know, chains. It's things that you hit like one button and it does a bunch of stuff for you. Um, you should have the SWS um, extension installed. Um, basically, they're free additional things that a Reaper can do for you. Um, and so what you can do is hit show action list. And this big, long list of things comes up that you can do. So you're going to make a recipe for whatever thing you're trying to accomplish is, and you're going to make a custom action, or at least you can, or you can use all of these other things that are out there. So for example, a lot of these are music related, but if I, for example, knew I wanted to turn something on and off, um, or split items at a cursor or, you know, any of these things, it would let you do that. Um, let me show you one of my custom actions. I think that's probably easiest. So let's say I wanted to do, um, a punch in a fix. This one's easy. Um, basically I found that I had to switch back. If you remember when I highlighted that area, I had to switch my mode and I forgot to actually probably switch it, but I think it's because I actually have a, my hotkey set up, so it'll do it for me. But if you go into custom punch and fix, I have a hotkey set up, control shift Q. But if you look at that, all it's doing is it, I've taken two items, I've given it a name, I've set record set record mode to time selection auto punch. So I did that. That's so if you think about it, it's just how I would go through the menu to find this setting and click it and then hit record. It just does all of this chains of events for me. So I don't have to go to each menu item and manually do it. So it speeds me up considerably, especially since I can give it a hotkey. And then I've changed. So that's what that one looks like. And then my custom, and the cool thing is if you remember a hotkey but you don't remember what it does, you can hit find shortcut and just type in whatever the hotkey is and it'll bring you right there. Um, but I have um, used SWS transport record stop um, as a way to record. Um, that's one of the regular recording options. And then actually what I was going to show you was my other shortcut, which is control R where you can, um, change it every time it's set, made sure, make sure that record is set to record mode normal. And then it does the SWS transport record stop. Those are the two steps it does. Um, usually if you don't have anything highlighted in your view, nothing, no, no time selection, your record auto punch will just work like a regular record. But if you do have something selected, it will override that. So just keep in mind that you'll want to make sure that whichever way you go, you always switch back to normal record mode or have nothing selected by hitting escape. <laughs> so that's kind of how that works. So paste room tone um, is another one that's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, this probably will look crazy, but um, there, this is a little bit more advanced and you can look online if you're like, hey, Reaper action to do X or Y or Z, whatever the thing you're trying to accomplish is. And people will usually share what they've come up with. Um, this is kind of how I did it. Um, you basically turn, uh, and I think uh, Booth Junkie has something very similar, if not exactly the same. I think I just glued the items as well, uh, just because I, I, I was trying that. I actually, not, <laughs> I think I've um, edited that. So ignore this glue items. Um, that's what happens when you play with stuff. So just do um, set auto crossfade off, set ripple editing off, do the paste. Uh, you'll have to have your clean room tone copied into your clipboard to make that work. Move the items to time selection, trim loop to fit, and then separate, set ripple editing per track and set auto um, crossfade on. Ripple editing. That's a good thing for me to mention. This seems complicated. I'll say this first. It's literally just 
if I was going to do this manually, how would I do it? And then figuring out what the steps are. So even if you just go out, find how someone's already set it up and recreate it, that's fine too. And you set it up as a hotkey um, down here in the shortcuts for selected action once you have it done. Because you would just hit new custom action, give it a name, drag stuff over. And then once you have it there, you'd select it from the list and you can do that. Um, cool. So let's, we can get into a different video or you can reach out to me and we can talk about what you're trying to accomplish to make a custom action, but that's a good start. The thing I was going to show you before I forget is ripple editing. What that means is if I pull this item over by itself, that's because ripple editing is currently disabled. So I'm able to move each item individually, which can cause issues because then all my timing gets weird. So if I have ripple editing on per track, I mean, we're only using one track in this case, so really it's just off or on. But if I then start pulling this guy over, everything behind it follows. And if I pull it forward, that's the same thing. So that's what ripple editing is. It means it's affecting everything down the chain. And if it's off, you're just acting with each item individually. So that's all ripple editing, editing is, whether it impacts just the item that you currently have selected or all the items after it. So sometimes you'll want to pull just one item out, which is what um, when it's off will do. And sometimes you just want to make room because you want to expand this one because maybe this is something else that you're saying or it's um, you just want to put more room tone in, etc. That's how you would do that. And then you can drag this back over, bump it up slightly so a little bit of red shows up so it's crossfading and you're golden. Hi, I'm recording in hoarding in Reaper. And now I'm continuing that sentence. So I just added recording back in um, when I did that. And so I said recording twice. So, but it is useful for you to have. Um, I think. I think with this, that's probably all you'll really need. The only other um, action I'll show you real quick, um, and there's tons, but um, for now, the only other one that might be useful is Smack Remover. Basically, and this one's gonna look complicated too, but basically you would select right before, um, you know, those little clicks that you're trying to get rid of, those little, you know, fast noises. That's usually just a mouth noise between two words. You could try something like this where it's a time selection. Uh, you put your cursor right where you want it. You move your cursor right, create a time selection a couple of times. Um, well, I think I put it five times. So it just moves it five things over. So if I was recreating that, I don't know if I can do it. Nope, I can't do it while it's open. So um, let me take a quick screenshot. Let's bring that in. Close that. But basically all that's saying, and let me pop in the finder. Eek. I don't need to see all my boring stuff. <laughs> uh, open up the screenshot I just took. Move it over to the screen. Cool. So this is what I'm trying to recreate. Move cursor to the right um, five times. So pull that. So basically all it's doing, and um, to zoom in, you can just hit the up arrow. Say I wanted to remove this guy. I don't, I think it's the end of a word, but for now we'll do that. So it's going, and I'm holding down shift while I'm going over, but I'm holding down shift and it's going over five times, which is highlighting. So that's basically what it's doing. And then the next part is time selection, uh, edit, cut items, tracks, envelope points, depending on focus within time selection, okay. So I go to the edit menu. Oh, sorry, I'm in my preview, not in this <laughs> edit menu. And then cut item tracks within time selection, if any. Great. Cause the crossfade to happen. So let's pop over here. Uh, glue items is just something I do to make all of those, oops, sorry, to make all of those kind of connect again. So. I believe that's in, it tells you, but uh, it's an item glue items. Okay. So I'm back here. I'm going to item and then I go to 
the blue items down here. Okay. So now it's all like it's all one continuing. Like it's all one track now. I've glued it back together. And then remove time selection. So I just hit escape by um, habit, but the end of that is literally just hitting escape. So that is what this custom action does. It uh, does all of those steps for you with one hotkey. So instead of doing all of those steps, what I can do is if you remember, I'll open up my actions list again now. Oop, I'm back in preview, actions, show action list. I called it smack remover and I put it on the forward slash. So now if I wanted to get remove, rid of something, I would, let's find something that'll be visible here. So that little blip there in the center, if I just put my cursor there and hit the smack remover button, it just did all of those things for me really quickly. I'll try it again here so you can see it. Smack remove and it's gone. So that's, that's the power of the actions. So don't let them confuse you. Enjoy the ride. Um, you can obviously change how everything looks. There's tons of videos out there that already show this, but I was hoping that this 25 minute video would get you up and running with some of the basics. And I hope you have a good day. Uh, my information to contact me will be in the description of the video. Feel free to leave a comment on this video if you have questions and uh, we'll go from there. And thanks for your patience on this. It was recorded on the fly, but I think there's some useful information in there. Have a good one.